Welcome to Turnpike Sports. I'm Dave Weishaddle. And as always, I'm joined by my producer and co-host, Doug Weishaddle. Doug, a very interesting weekend of sports. First, we have the Belmont Stakes, which was a great race. Essential quality wins that race. And then we have a rather shocking development in the uh, golf with uh, John Rahm. Yeah, COVID strikes again. You know, at the reminder that this is still with us and we still have to be careful. But uh, no, that was an, an unbelievable scene. It, it's interesting, not only in the fact that it happened right before the last round, happened with a six-stroke lead. I don't think he was going to lose that lead the way everybody was playing. And the betters that put money down on Rom, I'm assuming there's going to be some kind of, you know, some sports books may give some money back or something. I, I guess. You know, I know points, but it has that karma committee. They may do something. I don't know. But a lot of people lost out a lot of money there. And of course, Rom uh, lost out on the prize. Well, I, I'm curious about the testing. I mean, don't they test the players before the tournament starts, and don't they get the results before the tournament starts? I'm, I'm wondering. I mean, or do they test every day? Or I, I'm just wondering why this was done on the Saturday. I'm wondering the who, third round. I'm wondering the, who uh, in his camp was also tested. I, I don't know because it's not. It may not just be the player. It also could be like the caddy or somebody else in his entourage well, I, contact I, tracing contact so. tracing and it has to go on but again you know it's it's a fact of life for a while here now that when you're betting on these events you got to pay attention and be prepared for something like this to happen now i, I mean this is this was happening a while ago you know during the lock you know when the, the covid was actually really yeah hitting the country hard where everybody every so often a player was knocked out of the well, games that's, that's and why it's just, it's it's something to be aware of in the back of your head when you're when you're placing a bet. Now, well, too. well, that's why leagues played in the bubble. You know, the, the you can't the play protocols. golf in the bubble. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what their protocols are. Or I don't. Like I said, I, I'm not sure when he was tested, and we, it, certainly we saw when the results came in. But no, I I, I think it's a it, it's it's a it's a reminder that this thing is still with us. Well, somebody in America gets started on the indoor golf course, so we can have a bubble. Uh, also, uh, just uh, before we get into the rundown, we should remind everybody that the SBC Digital North America starts today, the 9th. And, uh, you know, just head on over to SBC Events, click on the uh, SBC Digital North America link, and register. It's free to register, and uh, it's a great sports betting conference, one of the best ones out there. Yeah, it's uh, June 9th and 10th, correct? It's a two day conference, a virtual, all online. So, uh, you know, it's all about sports betting in this country and also uh, around the world as well. So, uh, see, hear all the experts, hear all the industry insiders. It's a, it's actually a really great event to attend. So, where do you go for that? SBCEvents.com. Yes. Okay. Well, we got a great show coming up for you. We have a buy the number segment where Doug throws out a number, and sometimes I get it right, sometimes I get it wrong. I've been doing pretty well lately, so. Uh, I'm I'm very curious to see how I'll do this week. Then we also have a Turnpike Sports book report where we talk about what's going on the sports books across the country. Today's trip down the Turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Exit 1. First up today, the one aspect of the sports betting industry that has had a really huge impact on it is the stock exchanges. Yeah, no, there, there's a lot of good gaming stocks out there now. Well, there's also good gaming stock exchanges, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, just recently, I think it was last year, Roundhill Investments launched uh, BETS, B-E-T-Z. Yep. It was an ETF. It's an exchange-traded fund, which is basically a conglomeration of all different stocks, put into one, uh, I guess, entity where you can put money on just the entire exchange. The, the entire, However it does. The entire portfolio. Exactly. That's okay. a good word for there it right go. there. Well, we have another one coming. Well, it's um, coming. We can get on in on the ground floor on this one? At the time we're taping, it has okay. not launched. All right. This, is on the, this will be on the London Stock Exchange. Okay. Uh, Fisher Gaming which is a uh, consulting company t uh, for game for the gaming industry on a global scale, uh, has created an ETF with, I want to get this company correct, 
H A N E T F, Han ETF. It's a London based ETF platform okay. that creates exchange traded funds. Uh, they will be launching, this is a long name, the Sports Betting and iGaming UCITS ETF. Okay. All right. Otherwise going to be known as Bets LN for London. Okay, so this is going to be in the London Stock Exchange, right? This will be the very first ETF exclusively for sports betting and online gaming companies. They have other ETFs that include some of the gaming companies. This is going to be one exclusively for the gaming industry. Okay, all right. And and, and that's going to launch sometime in June? That will be launching in June. Okay, hopefully. Yeah, good. Uh, they're, they're basing the creation of this ETF on the industry in the United States, as a matter of fact, okay. which is an interesting way to create an ETF, if you think about it. All right. Uh, according to Goldman Sachs, they came out with a report that predicted the U.S. sports betting and iGaming market would grow about 2,300% between now and 2033. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Reaching a market worth about $53 billion. It's going to grow over 2,000%. 2,300%. Wow. Well, I'd love to look at the figures that made them figure that one out. You know, how does something come out to over 2,000%? These, these numbers are staggering. It's one of those things where, you know, I, I was talking with uh, somebody else in the industry over the last couple of days, and um, I mentioned the fact that a lot of people are saying that this is unprecedented growth for an industry in the United States, the sports betting industry, the iGaming industry, mm -hmm. and a lot of it was spurred on by the pandemic. Sure, sure. Now, I don't know if that's considered inflated uh, effect because I don't know if it's going to grow like it did during the pandemic year. Well, look, I can I can tell you f from uh, inside of Jersey, you know, we had online poker before the pandemic and it was kind of floundering. Then during the pandemic, I mean, it just exploded. And I'm, I'm very curious to see what the numbers will be after the pandemic, like with certainly with online poker and online casinos. Well, the other thing is, as new, as the United States expands, I mean, I think we're looking at another maybe five or six markets coming online. I, I don't mean to say I'm like launching mm -hmm. over the next couple of months here. You also have Canada now, which is moving toward the single event sports betting industry. They always had sports betting parlays. Yeah, yeah. They but, were like they were they were like Delaware for a long time. Yeah. Delaware, you can only do parlays. Um, I'm sure Canada would love being compared to Delaware. Yeah, right, just like Delaware. Yeah. We want to be like Delaware. But this uh, this ETF, and, and again, the the one run by Roundhill is doing the exact same thing in the United States as well as overseas, too, where the money invested into the ETF also helps fund these companies, too, because they're getting a chunk of the investment as well. So what Fisher Gaming is forecasting that – the same thing is going to happen with iGaming and sports betting in the U.K. as well. Okay. So uh, they're having, like, I guess you can say a sister sister or a cousin of the American bets. Well, I mean, I mean they're, they're not related. Their businesses aren't related. No, they're not related they're not companies, but, so, they're, but they're the yeah. same kind of fund. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so we have to keep an eye out on this, right? Yeah, There's and, no, and if uh, anyone hasn't been watching what we're talking about here, the BETZ, the BETS ETF, Started at 17 when it launched. Okay. It, I just checked it not too long ago. It'll be up, or the number will be slightly different by the time this airs. It was at round 32. Okay. All right. So what they what Fisher wants to do is basically what Roundhill did. All right. Uh, you know, low investment, high ROI for investors, uh, a lot of dividends, that sort of thing. Well, we got to keep an eye out. So th there's no set date yet, right? No, no, okay. it's been it, it's sort of been approved, I guess, right now, but it hasn't actually debuted okay. on the London stock. Well, exchange. we got to check it out. Exit two. Beetroot Labs, what a name, right? Sounds like a health food company. Yeah, exactly. Is it? No, it's an esports company. Oh, okay. <laughs> Close. No, it's an esports company. Right. Uh, they have just announced that their mobile strategy game, Dystopia: Contest of Heroes is preparing to kick off the world's largest epic mobile tournament in collaboration with Conor McGregor. Wow, okay. They got a big name. They got a huge name. Big, um, big name. And they have been awarded. So will, will Conor McGregor actually be playing in these games? I will get to that. Oh, okay. All right. Conor McGregor will be hosting it. He'll be hosting, okay. And when I get to it, this is the fun part. Um, 
This game has become so popular. Two months after it was launched, it was named the world's best mobile strategy game of 2020. It launched in November of 2020, and in two months it was named the, the world's best mobile okay, strategy game. Okay, what's the name of this game? Dystopia Contest of Heroes. Dystopia Contest of Heroes. Okay. Grand name for a, a, a <laughs> yeah, battle it's royal a, game, it's basically. A, it's a good name. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be doing da daily tournaments, singles and pairs. You can you can team up with somebody and you know do this game, and then they're going to have weekend tournaments that are qualifiers for this big tournament that's going to be so massive that they are claiming it's going to be one of the one of the largest prize pools in esports tournaments history. Really? Okay. And what they're hoping will drive this tournament is not just Conor McGregor hosting it. Conor McGregor will be a playable character in the game. He's going to be a character in the game? Oh, yes. wow. Okay. He's going to be hosting it, and he's, people can actually be Conor McGregor to play okay. in this game, All right. which I find very interesting because yeah, boy. it's the first time a sports figure has done this. They've they've had a lot of sports figures hosting and commentating on some of these esports tournaments. This is the first time that an actual athlete will be a playable character. Okay, very different type of uh, thing, and uh, that's interesting. Well, so when does all this start? This is going to start this year. They okay. haven't announced an actual opening date for this huge tournament. All right, this sounds pretty cool. I like this. This is actually put on not only with Beetroot Labs. But Conor McGregor is also part of it, and his company that represents him, Paradigm Sports Management, okay. is also going to be promoting, maintaining, involved in the evolution of this uh, partnership that they have here. Great. The uh, the amount of money Conor McGregor has earned from this has not been disclosed. It'll, it'll come out at some point, probably next year, mm -hmm. when they do the earnings reports yeah. on athletes. But uh, people who will be playing, there are going to be chances to win not only – prizes for winning the tournaments daily weekly and weekend okay but also in game tour in game prizes as well you're going to be playing and have a chance to win something and they're talking about signed merchandise a meeting with conor mcgregor okay um a lamborghini wow you can win a lamborghini a real car for a playing real, a virtual a sport if i'm a virtual game wow that's pretty cool and also cash prizes that start from the tens of thousands to the hundreds of thousands of dollars wow this is going to be throughout the entire year's now, tournament now now this whole tournament will this culminate in some really big last that's what we're talking about super this is going to be thing? one of the largest prize pools right. in esports tournament okay. history they're claiming um Let's see. What else here? So it's going to be over a year kind of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be so, a year-long tournament. So there's a lots of chances to play. Yeah. And lots of chances to win, I guess. Yep. Right. Uh, and uh, also, since it launched in November eight, on November 18th, 2020, it's in over 150 different countries, 20 different languages. Wow. Okay. So this is an actual worldwide tournament. And you That's don't really cool. have to leave your home to do this either. You could play from wherever you're at. If you got a rig that can actually handle the game, you can actually play. Now, when you say a rig, I have a small laptop computer. I would not be able to handle this you game. Probably that, you probably could. You can also could? also your phone is it's a mobile you think, so it'd be tablet phone. Okay. So you could probably do it all across every platform. See, if I did something like that, I'd want to do it on the computer. I need a bigger screen. I can't. Well, you can do always it stream it to phone. the computer. I mean, to the screens. You know, I, I don't even play online casinos or online poker on my phone, even though I have the apps. You know, I, I just don't do it because it's so small. You know. Well, a lot of the phones now and the and the tablets come with the streaming capability. Yeah, I you know. You put it on I the know. big screen. I know. I know. But you, you got to have. Think of it. You got to have one that can handle it. You know. The, See, uh, I would do the game like stuff. that. I would do the game like that if I can put it on my phone, but stream it to my television okay I, I can see that there you go okay so you see that that's something i do it's something i never even thought of doing but uh okay now i, uh, I have an option well here now you can uh, jump in and see if you can win a chance to meet conor mcgregor yeah, right. or would you prefer the uh lamborghini yeah i i'd be afraid parking that some places i don't, I don't know, know where i would park I, yeah, I didn't know what i would put it in my driveway <laughs> wouldn't you scrape I'm, the I'm bottom asking of the, for problems with that. Wouldn't you scrape the bottom of the car going up a yeah, driveway? Yeah, I know. Though? I got a, like a little incline. I don't know if I could uh, put a Lamborghini up there. So I don't know. Exit three. Going from the exciting world of Conor McGregor being a character in an esports game, we're going to talk some uh, trademark and patent infringement. Oh, okay. Mostly patent infringement. 
patent infringement. Yes. Huh? We don't talk too much patents too much. Patent is a is an interesting area of law. I mean, for lawyers who practice in patent law, they have to take a separate bar exam. Yes. That's yes. uh you know, I didn't like taking the bar exam being a regular attorney. <laughs> and then you have to take uh, the pat uh, the your bar exam and then you would have to take the patent bar exam, right? right? Jeez. And I, I, I no, took, thank you. I took three bar exams. I yeah, had to do yeah. Massachusetts, Jersey, and uh, and New York. Yep, so same was, thing. Uh, yep. You know, three times nuts, basically. Yep. Anyway, we have a 2017 case, a patent infringement case that just got resolved. Okay. This was between the companies Scuff Gaming, S C U F. All right. And Valve. Okay. Both are esport make uh equipment makers designers whatever you want to call them so they don't make the actual game they make the things that you use to play the game is that what you're saying yes and okay. also the, the the controllers as well as the platforms you know the, the yeah, equipment sure. whatever yep. you want to call it the hardware hardware there you go all right uh so scuff noticed that valve's uh steam controller now steam is a platform for esports all right that's, that's the programming Okay. It's, it's called a, it's called Steam. So Valve had this the Steam controller out in the market for a while. All right. And Scuff now, thought it looked now a little discontinued. similar. Now discontinued, by the uh, way. All right. Uh, they thought it looked Scuff very Scuff thought it looked very similar to what their subsidiary Ironberg Inventions created. Okay. And patented. All right. And uh, what they did was they brought the patent infringement case, uh, seeking multi million dollars in damages. And during the case, it came out that what Scuff had, or what Scuff subsidiary Ironbug Ironberg Invest in Inventions created, mm -hmm. and let me get it right here: controllers with underside buttons that allowed players to use their fingers instead of their thumb and pointer fingers. Oh, okay. To play games. All right. So basically, it was a little handheld device that and, had all the buttons underneath. Okay. All right. So they noticed that Valve's Steam controller was very similar, if not exactly alike, their patented controller hmm. in question. Okay. Uh, so they filed infringement suit in 2017. This has been going on since then. Yeah. They just resolved this. Uh, Valve's argument was that the patent that Scuff had filed was so specific, it only covered buttons. Let me get their argument correctly here, too only covered elongated protruding buttons on the underside of a controller. Okay. So I they know. they went ultra min wow. minutia right. here in their arguments, and they, they kind of had to. Sure. Uh, because from what everything was pointing at, you know, Val, uh, Scuff was showing these different diagrams, and it was a very interesting second argument that Valve introduced, and it was because of the pandemic. Okay. Because they were using Zoom. Uh, Scuff Valve accused Scuff of creating false images to show similarities between Valve's controller and Scuff's controller. Oh, okay. They were they were submitting false images via Zoom, and there's no there was no way to check. Them. So that's what they were claiming. That was one of the claims. Okay, that was thrown out right away. Okay. So uh, judge ruled against Valve. They judged the the uh, patent was infringed according to the court. Four million dollars in damages. Valve tried to appeal, didn't happen. Scuff, not happy enough with the win, filed another appeal to increase the amount of damages. Okay. All right. They went after more and more damages. Boy, they were angry, huh? Well, they, they were saying this was intentional. <laughs> okay. All right. Because what happened was, and Valve even admitted this, uh, as testimony came out, Valve's lead designer said he wasn't aware of the other patent until it passed through the design phase and was moving to the processing and construction phase. Okay. So it was really too late. They had invested so much money. All right. They just went ahead and did it. Oh, okay. All right. So there is where the patent infringement, the intentional side came in. Okay. So they All knew right. they had infringed before it went to market, but that, they went ahead and did that's it. That's what the judge ruled. That's what the okay. judge ruled. All right. So it was kind of interesting to see it, and Valve is still not done with this. Well, look, hey, if they lost more than $4 million, you know, they uh, they got a case. Well, yeah. it, it, I, they certainly have a case because they won, but, you know, certainly they can prove more damages. The, the reason Valve is not done with this, they're done with this court case. They're going to pay and all that stuff, they said. Huh? 
they're creating another controller that's similar to the Steam controller. Wow. Okay. They're going. They're, it's going to be a handheld device. It's going to be a little thing now. Okay. Instead right. of the big two-handed things. Well, we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun to see if uh, Scuff wants to go a second round with these guys. Mm-hmm. Exit four. Going to talk a little fantasy sports today. Okay. Big three. You know the three-on-three the basketball, three basketball yes. league founded by Ice Cube? Yep. They have announced their first-of-its-kind partnership with Superdraft, okay. which is a subsidiary of Caesars Entertainment. Uh, Superdraft is now the official daily fantasy partner of the league. What's interesting, it's not just going to be fantasy sports. Oh, okay. So it's going to going to include sports betting, too? It's or? going to include sports betting. Okay. I uh, was going to say I have not seen... Uh, any big three uh, games on the sports books? I, I, I guess you know it, it still be won't little, be. It still, still won't be, be not yet because it's going to be through Superdraft. Okay, everything everything we're going to talk about right now is through Superdraft. Uh, the Superdraft will also be the presenting sponsor of the 2021 Big Three Draft, which will be renamed 2021 Big Three Superdraft. Oh, okay. So they got naming rights basically out of this, oh, good which, for which is actually pretty cool. Hey, it, it flows. It fits. <laughs> and the season will tip off July 10th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. So they're going the entire gambling route here with this. Okay. Um, Big Three will be able to offer daily fantasy contests for every game that features Superdraft's player-friendly multiplier mode, which is basically you pick the players and... You, you you chip in a couple extra bucks and you get a multiplier okay. mode. So where would I go to get involved in the fantasy aspect of Superdraft? Do, do I go to Superdraft's website? Do I go to the Big 3 Fantasy website? You can we- go to Superdraft to take a look at what Superdraft offers fantasy because they do more than just the Big 3. Okay. All right. But if you go to the Big 3 and their app as well, the Big 3 app, they're going to have the ability to do some uh interaction with the super draft uh, okay. sites through it uh there's also going to be free betting through the free sportsbook app offered by super draft boy everyone's doing the free betting thing the yep. social gaming kind of thing yeah. yeah well you know that's the easiest way to do what's the phrase customer engagement sure sure free, fan, free fan to play, engagement free to play uh, daily trivia that sort of stuff and also super draft is going to have some uh integration into the game broadcast Okay. As well as um, the stat lines for every player is going to have the multiplier mode effect on their stats. So you can see what would happen if you did a multiplier mode on a certain player. Okay. Which is kind of a unique thing to do I for like that, a yeah. broadcast. Yeah, like uh, for fans sitting courtside, they're going to have stuff. Uh, One of a kind games will be available, like trivia, you know, free sports betting kind of stuff. Uh, big three players and coaches are all going to be brand ambassadors for Superdraft across linear and digital media. And I've actually seen one or two of the games. They're interesting to watch. Yeah, no, I've checked them out. Yeah, no, they're good. I, I can't remember what station I was watching them on, but... Um, They've been all over the place. I, 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 I know TBS I carried them for a while, yeah. TNT. The one rule I love in this league, and I, I wish uh, the NBA would consider but you really can't do it in the NBA because... It probably would just drag out the game a little bit more. They have this bring the fire rule. Bring the fire rule. I'm Which, not familiar with that. It's a cha- it's a foul challenge. If if you're called, if a foul is called that you don't agree with, you challenge it, and then the, the two players involved in the foul have a mini one-on-one game to <laughs> you know, determine the foul. That'll never work in the uh, NBA. But, no, it's a good idea. I like that. It's, it's actually a really interesting I like idea. That, yeah. I, I guess it's a one-point game. You know, you do a one-on-one game kind okay. of thing. I, I, I've actually never seen the challenge, so I don't know exactly how they do it. But it's a very interesting way to challenge a foul. Hmm. I mean, okay. I, I, it's, I, I would love to see the NBA have something like this. It'd be interesting, yeah, but I don't know how the NBA yeah, I, would I, kind of incorporate something like that. I, I, yeah, I would like something like that. You may, maybe, you know what? That that should be great for, like, the NBA All-Star game if they wanted to try something like that there. But, you know. Other than that. Well, if you think about it, 
between the exhibition season and All Star, those are the two proving grounds for everything. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, what did uh, baseball do with that runner on second? Yeah, they still do that. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but they they tried it on the minors or something. You know, or, I, or the World Baseball Classic, they did it there. So. I was I was watching a Yankees game and I I dozed off at the ninth inning and I kind of woke up in the tenth. I was like, how the hell did that guy get on second? Then I realized, oh yeah, the new rule you put the guy on second and uh, extra inning. So yeah, no, I reminded myself of it. Well. Maybe we'll see some more uh, innovations coming. And today's trip down the turnpike was brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. And as always, you can get in touch with Turnpike Sports by calling or texting us at 609-512-5910. That's 609-512-5910. At Turnpike Sports is the show's handle on Facebook and Twitter. At Turnpike Sports Radio is our handle on Instagram. And as always, our email address is info at turnpikesportsradio.com. And don't forget, you can listen to the show via Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, Radio.com mobile app, as well as uh, Stitcher and YouTube. You can also watch us on your smart TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV. Head on over to TurnpikeSports.net. You'll be able to watch our video channel there. Coming up, because we're going to have a By the Numbers segment where Doug throws out a number, tries to stump me. Usually he does. Sometimes I've been doing pretty well on the By the Numbers segment, so I'm very curious to see how this goes. And also later on, we have a Turnpike Sports Book Report where we talk about what's going on, the sports books across the country. So stick around. More Turnpike Sports after this. Psst. Yeah, you. Come here. Haven't you heard? We don't need to hide anymore. Now, we can shop privately for adult products at adamandeve.com. They've got massage oils, lingerie, and lots more we can't mention here. Use the offer code SPICE404. They'll give you 50% off almost any one item, three free DVDs, free mystery gift, and free shipping. That's 50% off, free shipping, and more. Private shopping starts at adamandeve.com. Today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-297-9788. 800-297-9788. We'll get back to the show in a few moments, but I just wanted to take some time and tell everyone about Bean Genius, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. Bean Genius sells freshly roasted coffee from some of the best independent coffee roasters in the country. They feature over 2,000 specialty coffee blends, all at your fingertips at BeanGenius.com. Here's how it works. Head on over to BeanGenius.com and take their palate profiler test to find out what coffee best fits your taste. Then select from a variety of subscription plans. Every subscription comes with free shipping and delivery can even be scheduled for once or twice each month. And based upon your review of each coffee blend you try, Bean Genius actually learns your individual taste preferences and then suggests future coffee blends for you. 
And now you can get 10% off your Bean Genius subscription when you use our promo code PIKE at checkout. Bean Genius offers a variety of subscription plans to suit any coffee lover's needs. Subscribe with Bean Genius today and start enjoying some of the best tasting coffee around. And save 10% off your coffee plan with promo code PIKE. And by the numbers is sponsored by Play Sugar House Online Casino and Sportsbook in New Jersey. Sign up at PlaySugarHouse.com slash Pike and get a first deposit match of up to $250. Enjoy the casino experience online. Play Sugar House offers over 400 games online, slots, table games, hey, even bingo. It's like being in a casino without leaving your home. That's PlaySugarHouse.com slash Pike to get your first deposit match of up to $250 today. Must be 21 years or older and physically present in New Jersey. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit 800gambler.org. And welcome to another edition of Turnpike Sports by the Numbers, where we let the numbers tell the story or the statistic or the ratings or the dollar amount, whatever the number ends up being. You know, we talk about a whole bunch of different areas in this. And the first number we're going to talk about, 1,332,819.44. Well, certainly it's a dollar figure. Is it a... uh, Well, I just gave it away when I said cents at the uh, end there. Yeah, is it a a bet of some kind, a winning bet, a a jackpot? It's a jackpot. I would think something like that. Okay, well, that's that's as far as I'm going to go. It's a jackpot. And this is going to sound like... I'm considering that a win for me. This this is going to sound like the beginning of a bad joke here. A man walked out of an Arizona casino. Okay. He walked out $1.3 million richer. Wow. Okay. He spent time on a jackpot, on, on a slot machine. As a matter of fact, the... I like those people that win jackpots and they just sit down for five minutes and get... get oh, no, this guy dollars. was at it for a while. Oh, he was at it for a while. Well, he, yes. well, well, he, uh, he then he earned it. You know? uh, he, he sat down and this machine pays out an awful lot. The dollar Wheel of Fortune slot machine. Boy, Wheel of Fortune. Boy, they, every, every week there's a story about someone winning big and the Wheel of Fortune or the Divine or Divine Fortune. I guess that's a big online. That's the big and online that, one. That's, that's, that's always fortune, a good payout. Yeah. But IGT's or Wheel Monopoly of Fortune. Or Monopoly game or some Monopoly yeah, game. There, there, yeah, there's so, so many different ones. So, But um, this man, I'm not going to say his name because of anonymity issues. He wants to remain anonymous even though the press release had his name on it. Okay. He was still you know, <laughs> okay. surprised at that one. All right. Um, he was at the Weekopo, We Weekopa Casino Resort in Scottsdale, Arizona. Weekopa. Weekopa. And he'd been playing all afternoon, and he decided to leave around 8 p.m. on a Wednesday evening. All right. Before he sat down to play his last $100. Okay. He put the $100 into the machine. And it paid out the one point three three million. Wow! On his last one hundred dollars. See, and, I like those stories better than the one. Oh yeah, someone sat down and put two dollars into a machine and won two million dollars. You know, it's like, okay, you know, but this guy worked for it. How about, how about the people? That, how about the people that threw? That's him? the biggest gamble with your last one hundred dollars. He put it in. He could have went home one hundred dollars and been happy, but no, he put it in and he took the chance. That could have been gas money and food good, money. Well, good for you him. Know, all that you know stuff. But good for him. How about the guys that put in the 15 cents and win the $2 million yeah, jackpot? Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, but according to the casino, to receive a payout that large on a slot machine like that is extremely rare. That's what the casino said. I, I we've been seeing now. This do an they awful uh, lot. did the casino bring out the giant they check? They had the giant check with the them and pictures everything. Yes, and they had okay. all that. So, yeah. well, congratulations to. Um, Mr. R over in uh, Arizona for the win. Next number, 609,627.50. I, th- I think I know what I you're learned my ta- lesson I, there. I know what you're talking about. We talked about it before. Was it, uh, uh, it was a poker, a bad beat poker thing. Bad I don't know. Jackpot. I don't know where it is, but we talked about it earlier this week. So that's how I know it. The biggest bad beat jackpot for the brand new live casino Philadelphia. Wow. All right. So they have had some good action there. It's also one of the largest jackpots in recent history at a Pennsylvania casino for a bad beat jackpot. $609,627.50. Happened on Memorial Day weekend. Wow. Boy. Seven players at the poker room at the live casino Philadelphia. Yeah. And uh, 
Now, how, how does this work? Does do they split that, or do each of them get six hundred and nine thousand dollars, or they split it up? Well, it's split up in certain ways, and I'll I'll go through oh, okay. it here in a second. Right. I got okay, it. I got the, I because I, I had to learn it too. I right. I wasn't sure exactly how they broke it down, but. Everyone knows the bad beat well, jackpot. Well, it it's, a lo- w- it's a losing hand, but it was four of a kind in the losing yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. It was a really good losing hand. But yeah. I, I'm, I'm just assuming it, it depends on what you were holding, right? How much of this you get? Right. Okay. All right. The winning hand, which was a king high straight flush, gets 25% right off the top. So that was 150. I, tell you, I am shocked he lost with that or some someone lost with that hand. No, no, no. The losing hand was four four queens. Oh, okay. That's what a bad beat is. Yeah, losing okay. hand of four of a kind. Okay. The king high straight flush beat the four queens. All right. He gets one hundred fifty two thousand four hundred seven dollars of the total. The winning hand. Okay. The uh, king high straight flush. Okay. That's twenty five percent of the jackpot. All right. The losing hand. Uh, let's see. Gets fifty percent of the bad beat jackpot. All right. 304000 went to the four of a kind. All right. So basically it works in reverse. Okay. The, the winner is the loser. Well, the winner gets some money, but the loser with a really good hand gets it's like better a better chunk of the money. It's yeah, like it's a, reward a, it's a reward for reward, having the yeah. better hand. Yeah. 50% to the losing hand, to the losing four of a kind, 25% to the winning hand, and then the other five players had to split the remaining 25%. Okay. So everybody kind of won. Yeah, that's good. so. The, the each every uh, the uh, other five players got about thirty thousand dollars. You know, thirty thirty thousand five hundred bucks each. I got to tell you, Philly Live has the greatest location of any casino on the East Coast. They share a parking lot with all of the stadiums in Philadelphia. How how, how much better can you get? How good are your tailgating parties going to be at that casino? You just walk across. And just go right to the Eagles game. Well, Unbelievable. They're going to get better now because they just announced their uh, loyalty plan, the, X- the live casino Philly. Yeah, I filled one out. Yeah, Their cards yep. can be used at Xfinity Live now. Oh, nice. Which is, uh, by the way, it's uh, – how would you explain this structure? There's a complex it's, of it's a, four stadiums, and in the middle of the four stadiums is another entertainment venue. It's a, Yeah, I, I, it, I don't want to call it a – it's like a mall. I, it's, I hate calling it a mall. Think of it this way. It's, it's a food court with bars and restaurants. Bars and it's, restaurants. it's a bar court. Yeah, yeah. So That's it's, the only it's way to great. describe it. It's great. You have that there. You have now the new casino there. You have Xfinity Live there. You have all the stadiums there. Man, what a great time for a, a game day, you know? Well, it's going to get better as uh, football gets in there. Oh, yeah. Football is going to be fun there. Oh, I can't wait. Can you imagine doing Xfinity Live? If you don't have tickets to the game, you do Xfinity Live pregame then you go to the casino during the game yeah right in the uh, sports book or you just stay in xfinity live and uh, still earn your comp points yeah. for a live casino filling. see that's great that's awesome that that's actually a really nice thing to see there i'm, I'm waiting for a lot of the other ones i bet you arizona is going to start doing stuff like that once they have all their sports books in the arenas sure sure next number 185.6 million no clue this is the amount of cross-platform engagements the Los Angeles Lakers generated during this past basketball season. Boy, what a letdown the Los Angeles Lakers are to their They won fans. something. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, boy, you were thinking they were going to be in the finals. You know, everyone was talking about the Lakers and the Nets. That's who was who, who was going to be. But, uh, no, uh, boy, well, just an- the, the an- injury, injury bug hit the Lakers. With Anthony Davis not playing, that was, yeah. that was not going to happen. Yeah. That team can't survive without both of both Davis and LeBron on the court. Yeah, yeah. You knew they were in trouble. Well, like I said, they, they led the league, 185.6 million cross-platform engagements. Uh, they had – this was all across Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, this was 20 million more than the next team, which was the Golden State Warriors. They had 165.1 million, and here is where the Nets come into play. Okay. They were third, hmm. and I would think they would have been a little higher, especially with the "quote unquote" super team they built. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, it, it, that sounds about right. I, I would think they'd be better than the Golden State Warriors, but uh, you know, these are huge markets. Yep. You know, so that that's what it is. Yeah. But uh, see, I, I would have thought the Lakers first, the Nets. And even though, uh, you know, they were a very surprising season, I would think the Knicks would have been up there because just where they play. 
So. Well, they they probably were in the top ten because yeah. uh, the top five rounded out with the Celtics, okay, fifty one point nine million, and the Miami Heat thirty nine point seven. Okay. I'm actually shocked at the Heat. I thought the Heat would have a little bit better social media presence, given the fact that you know where where they're playing too. Because sure, because that that's a huge industry down there too. Especially there's like esports industry like you wouldn't believe in Florida. So there's a lot of social media going on there. Okay. Uh, let's see. The top performing post, and this is obvious, but it's also a sad one, belonged to the Lakers, whose tribute to Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna uh, generated 1.2 million engagements following their death in the helicopter crash. Yeah, that's sad. Very sad. Boy. So, and now, she, uh, now his wife, his uh, wife is now embroiled in a Nike suit. Apparently, they had pictures of a sneaker that they weren't supposed to share. Some, so, somebody anyone. bought the sneakers. Someone or bought someone, the sneaker. someone got a pair of the sneakers. Wow. Like, no one knows if it was bought. No one knows how they got it. But somebody has the prototype of wow. the shoe okay. that wasn't released. It, and Nike was not supposed to release it, supposedly, according to the agreements or whatever. But there's some kind of... Uh, Something weird just some, happened there. Some yeah. issue about the sneaker, which was kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, last number for the day, $6 million. $6 million. Six million. Oh wait a minute! Wait, 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 wait! I I know that number. Is it the Babe Ruth thing? The Babe Ruth card? The Babe Ruth thing? Yes. Yeah. Correct. The Babe. Well, I I can't call it a rookie card because it's not his rookie card with the Red Sox. It's I called a pre rookie card. It's called a pre rookie card. Okay. This is he was in a minor league or a semi pro. That's the other way to what, phrase what is, it. This, what is this it? is minor league card. It's a minor league card. When okay. he played for the, let me get the name of their things right here. I, he played for the Baltimore Orioles of the International League, okay, which was considered a minor league circuit of the time. It was 1911. All right. Okay. Now, the, the picture is actually from 1911. Apparently, he was good enough there to garner a card. When the card came out, okay. he had already been bought by the Red Sox. Okay. so He was, he was on the Red Sox in 1914. That's when the card came out. Oh, okay. Uh, it's been valued at $6 million. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's the 1914 Baltimore News Babe Ruth card because Baltimore News, the newspaper, was the one putting these out. Okay. For this team, there are only ten in existence, wow. if that. Ten that they know of, or ten that were only made. Ten that they know of. Okay. But they don't know if there's actually even ten out there. There could be fewer. I mean, from from 1911 or 19 whatever it was. I mean, I'm I'm shocked that. One still exists. Well, the front of the card shows Babe Ruth is six foot, six foot two inch tall Ruth standing there wearing a glove. All right. And on the back, it had the team schedule for the season. It didn't have stats or anything else like that. You know, the famous baseball card that I know is the Honus Wagner one, which was, you know, enormous in value. I mean, this is going to be. This will dwarf that Honus Wagner card, right? Well, this is dwarfing the two other. Previous record holders. Mickey Mantle card had a $5.2 million price tag. That was a private transaction. Okay. And also, uh, in August 2020, the Mike Trout rookie card went for $3.4 million. See, that's surprising. Those are, the, those are the two. They were the two most at the time. Now with this Babe Ruth card. And also, this is not going to go being sold the normal way. This isn't going to go private sale. You're, no one's going to own the actual card. Okay. This is going to be sold by Collectible. It's a company that allows people to buy shares in collectibles. All right. So which is not, very it's a very unique company to do this. So they're not really going to sell it to one buyer. No, you're right? going to be able to okay. buy a piece of it for three bucks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's basically they're going to do an IPO if you think about it. Okay. So you're going to own stake, an equity stake in this card. And as the car goes up in value or down in value, so does your amount of equity in it. All right. So okay. your three dollar investment, if this goes to ten million dollars, shoots through the roof. If it goes the other way, you know that sort of thing. So um, right now, one the last time one of these Ruth cards, the nineteen fourteen cards, they they had these out there before, was not in really good shape. Sold at auction for four hundred fifty thousand. 
This must be in pristine shape. Well, look, from my from what I know from collectors, condition is everything. What, what these guys usually do is bring it and get it rated, and so put it in plastic, and there's a rating on it. This one must be really nice. Well, they're going for break, six million dollars. They're going to break it down to twenty thousand shares at three dollars a piece. So you can buy more than one share. Okay. So or one unit, however they want to phrase it, and they also said that. Depending on what card this is, some were printed with a blue and some with a red border. So uh, whoever's got, I think this is the blue border one. And I got a picture of it up on the TV side so people can see it. Okay. Uh, it's a very interesting looking card. One of the first ones ever made, it looks like, in the United States. Huh. So it's a really nice piece of history, too. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be going on sale. Uh, let's see. Uh no date has been given, but it will be soon. So, but just head over to Collectible and take a look at the um, what they have to offer. They have other things there too, which are really cool to look at too. They have some really good pieces of memorabilia. Oh, check it out! And that that'll do it this week for the by the number segment. If you have any news or stats or anything you want to throw at us, you know, to, for this segment, info at turnpikesportsradio dot com. The book report's coming up, so stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. Attention seniors with Medicare, this is an important announcement. Did you know you may qualify for a monthly Social Security rebate? Did you know you may qualify for a $0 monthly premium? That's right, you may qualify to get $135 added back to your Social Security check each month. Just call the Medicare Benefits line to get your options. It's a free call. You may also qualify for $0 premiums, dental coverage, vision coverage, hearing coverage, and prescription drug coverage. With this type of plan, you don't need Medicare supplement insurance. Call now because you deserve to get the most from your Medicare benefits, including a rebate to your Social Security check each month. Agents are standing by with free information regarding Medicare benefits. It's a free call with no obligation, but it could mean big savings for you. Call the Medicare Benefits line now to see if you're eligible for a Social Security rebate. Call 800-574-6770. 800-574-6770. Now that we're home more than ever, we need to feel safe. Call it a sign of the times or the world we now live in. What do you want to keep safe? The people in your life? What do you want to protect? Your possessions? The things that belong to you? The things that you've worked hard for? Wouldn't it be nice to have tested, trusted 24-7 protection? Peace of mind, real protection that's always there for you and your whole family? Well, now you can with one of our state-of-the-art home security systems. Everyone thinks their home is safe until the unexpected happens. Help protect your home and loved ones today with the affordable next generation in home security. To help keep your family and property safe, call 1-800-520-4068 now. Representatives are standing by to assist you. That's Sometimes life is wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. If your employer doesn't supply health care coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. To get the coverage you need, call the number on the screen now.
Turnpike Sports Book Report. The Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book. Available anywhere in New Jersey, BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E. Make your first wager of $20 or more and you'll get $100 in free bets. That's $100 in free bets when your first wager on Borgata Sports is $20 or more. Get into the action with BorgataSports.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Welcome to this week's edition of the Book Report, uh, where we talk about what's going on in the news and notes and all the different states and sports betting reports around the country. We've got uh, our usual suspects of state and national reports. We've got legislation. We've got deals. We've got launches. And speaking of launches, we're going to start off right away with Nebraska. Nebra- yeah, that's right. We uh, They... Join the ranks of the uh, sports betting community. Yep, Governor, I want to get his name right, Governor Pete Rickett, Ricketts signed gaming expansion bill LB-561 into law last week. And it's not only sports betting, you know, right? You well, got, it's gaming uh, expansion. It's gaming expansion. You got uh, it, sports betting's part of it, but no mobile, is that correct? No mobile, it's retail only. All right. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's going to be it's gonna be, uh, retail betting at state's horse racing tracks. That's it. Okay, well. So, uh, very, very simple. <laughs> hey, it, it, it's a step, a step in the right direction. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. There's no, residents will not be able to place bets on in-state collegiate sports, especially the home games of the the two uh, college teams that are big there, the uh, Cornhuskers, the Huskers. The Nebraska Cornhuskers. And congratulations to uh, Nebraska for joining the ranks of the uh, sports betting states. And speaking of launching sports betting, we have a bunch of launch dates for okay. upcoming upcoming state launches. All right. We have Arizona. They announced that they are still on track for the start of the NFL season. Uh, That's always one of those benchmark dates, you know, start of the NFL season was when they want to start sports betting, or usually it's the playoffs or the Super Bowl or March Madness is another benchmark that everyone uses. So uh, we're into the realm of now they, when we hear of launches, their goal date is start by the launch of the NFL season, right? Well, the official date that they have set as a target is September 9th. Okay. So... uh, and speaking of other launch dates, we have, and I'll go through the list of what's coming up here, Wyoming plans to launch online sports betting September 1st. Wow, okay. South Dakota, Deadwood, uh, retail sports betting September 1st. Connecticut is planning to launch online sports betting by September 6th. Great, good. Uh, and in fall of 2021 of this year, Maryland is going to launch retail sports betting as well as online offerings to follow after retail launches. Nebraska is going to be launching like we just talked about. And then we have the first quarter of 2022 is the planned launch of online sports betting in New York. Now, that okay. that can be pushed back. But tentatively, that's when they're actually planning on launching online sports betting in uh, the Empire State. So I, I guess their goal date is the Super Bowl, I would guess. Yeah, I, yeah, I bet yeah. you they're if they're not going to do the start of the NFL season, the next big date is the Super Bowl. So and, I guess after, that's their target date. And after that is March Madness. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, right in a row, you got two big events. It makes sense. Sure, sure. Uh, they're not going to have anything in place by the fall here. So, uh, but again, you know that that could all go by the wayside. I'm still I'm still dying to see if they get the uh, casino in Manhattan. Uh, there was a lot of talk about that. I, someone even said, could there be a casino in Times Square, which, uh, you know, the traffic is terrible in New York already. Can you imagine a casino in New York City? But no, the people have been talking about it. Developers have been talking about it. I, I don't see any concrete plans for it. But, you know, hey, I guess it's fun to talk about. You know, there, there's always a way to introduce it. Sure. And if it gets rejected, yeah. it gets rejected. But you keep introducing it, keep your constituency happy, that sort of yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. thing. So, uh, but uh, That'd be amazing, though. A casino in the heart of Manhattan. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, just so we have an overall picture here, about 40% of the country has access to some form of legal sports betting now. 
Great. When these other states launch, you're looking at probably another bump up, another 5%, 45%, 46% of the country will have access to legal sports betting in some way, shape, or form, whether it's retail or online, or even parlay stuff. You know, I, I have to check, and I want to see how these things develop, but, you know, I, I'm a resident of New Jersey, and I have the sports books, mobile sports books for New Jersey. I mean, I'm very close to Pennsylvania. I'm I'm in New York City all the time. I'm wondering if, you know, if there's going to be a shared wallet between these, you know, these jurisdictions. Because I don't I don't I don't want to, you know, when I'm in uh, Pennsylvania, I don't want to have a whole section of sp- uh, sports books on my phone. Or when I'm in Manhattan, I don't want to have a whole different other apps for uh, sports books. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that these things, I mean, if I have FanDuel in New Jersey, hopefully I'll be able to play it in Pennsylvania and New York. Well, again, depends on the operator. Also, yeah, it depends, yeah. depends on the platform, too, because a lot of them are using different platforms in different states, too. Well, the one thing I screwed up, I found out on my phone, you know, I, I got a new phone and I downloaded some of the uh, sports books that I use, and one of them was Sugar House. And I accidentally downloaded the wrong uh sports book app i i did uh, uh sugar house pennsylvania when i should should have done sugar house new jersey and it wasn't working so i you know well i finally realized what it was i i, I didn't see the top it said sugar house pennsylvania i was like why isn't this working well see that's an indication of different platforms well that, that's why when i hope uh, that would started this question i mean I, I i hopefully you know if i have a sports book app in New Jersey, if I cross state lines, hopefully I can just change to Pennsylvania and it's a shared wallet. So well, uh, here, hopefully I'll, that'll... I'll, I'll give you an indication of how different the platforms are. Uh, IGT okay. just announced they did a deal in North Dakota with just the Dakota Magic Casino and Hotel. All They're right. going to be using the Play Sports platform. All now, right. other casinos have different platforms. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of the owner of the casinos, the different casinos make different... Uh, uh, deals as you know scientific games they just uh, launched uh in indiana virginia and tennessee with winbet winbet uses the scientific games platform mm-hmm. so uh and you know that uses don best sports stats yeah yeah and every platform is going to be different yeah it but yeah, different I, I hope as more and more states get sports betting and you know like i said i'm in new jersey and you know new york is getting mobile sports betting pennsylvania already has it i if i have FanDuel, i hopefully i can use that same app and just change the location where i'm at or or wherever how that works but uh hopefully it's a shared wallet but it's uh you know, just to make things easier for me. Well, you know what's going to be really nice at some point in New Jersey? What? You don't have to go to another state to bet on New Jersey college teams. Yes, I hear that. Uh, well, hopefully the voters will agree that that's kind of a stupid rule and it does state nothing Senate. for integrity. And, yeah. uh, the, you the, know, state hopefully, uh, the state does... Senate just approved 36 to 1 the resolution to amend the sports betting law to permit legal wagers on in-state college teams and collegiate events. Yeah, because right now New Jersey has the rule that if a college and university is located in New Jersey or if there is a sporting event of a collegiate nature in the state, you can't bet on it. So, no, uh, it's it's always been. I know. I, know I guess the idea it, it was an integrity kind of thing to protect the student sure, athlete. Sure, that I, sort I of understand, thing. but you know, it it really in practicality it did nothing. Well, in practicality, it just denied the state a Money. certain amount of revenue. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I like the way one state did it. I mean, they said you can bet on the college teams. You just can't bet on the individual players. Right. I think know? that's a good I, compromise. I think that's a good that's compromise. That's a great compromise. Yeah. I, I can work with that. Bet on college, but not the players. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I know Florida threw that into their bill. We'll see what happens down there. That's that's going to have a whole bunch of messy legal challenges and it's still got to have even federal approval. So, uh, but again, yeah, I think, you know, with everything that happened also with the pandemic and this past March madness, they had an event in, uh, there was also a collegiate, no, I'm sorry, not March. I misspoke there. There was a collegiate event in New Jersey where we couldn't bet on any of the games. Oh yeah. No, there was a uh, collegiate 
uh, basketball uh, tournament. I forgot which one. I think it was the MAC or something like that. The That's Mid-Atlantic what I'm yeah. thing. But uh, no, it, it happened in Convention Hall, in Boardwalk Hall in, in Atlantic City with about nine sports books around it, and no one could bet on it. No, that that's, that probably was the last straw for all of this I, stuff. It was just weird. But it, you know, it, it, a great basketball tournament. You know, you couldn't bet on it mobily. You had nine sports books in walking distance, I mean, next door you had a sports book where you couldn't even bet on this thing. You so. actually had to leave New Jersey to bet on a New Jersey yeah, sporting yeah, event, yeah. which that makes absolutely no sense. And I think this is where they're trying to alleviate a little bit of frustration on the on the better side, better side, I should say, not mm-hmm. better side. But, uh, yeah, we'll see exactly what happens. That's going to go on the ballot in November. And, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping people vote for this because that just creates an expansion of not only the yeah, revenue more, more, but the taxes more revenue for the state more more revenue for the state more revenue for the casinos especially now after covid where they need some help you know getting back to where they used to be for their revenues and everything so you know that's this is a right move uh going over to some numbers uh we have april and may numbers to talk about here uh we didn't have time last week to, to talk <laughs> about we're still talking april numbers uh we didn't have time to talk virginia because virginia released their april sports betting numbers uh at the end of press time for us before we started taking. okay uh they reported a sports betting handle of 236 million dollars 22 percent lower than march they're experiencing the same march madness hangover pretty much the entire nation is sure sports betting wise uh they had a let's see gross revenue adjusted gross revenue of 11.38 million that's after all promos were taken out and deductions and and it was it ended up being an 8.22 percent hold for operators in the state interesting thing about virginia the growth of that industry they're expecting it to be the fastest to 1 billion Oh, okay. Yeah, didn't we have a story? What was the fastest to one billion? Was it Colorado? Right now, the fastest is Tennessee. Still, Tennessee still six really? months. Okay, it took Tennessee. them six months of operation. I knew it was Tennessee or Colorado, but uh, no, Tennessee did amazing. And Tennessee doesn't even have retail sports books. Tennessee is all online. According to all the stats we're seeing, uh, Virginia is expected to cross the one billion dollar mark in handle in five months of operation. Wow. So they are doing some really good. They, all they need is about $150 million in May in terms of handle to actually get to the $1 billion mark. So they'll probably get that. They'll probably get that, yeah. yes, because uh, especially they just had 236 in April. Um, I'm wondering, what's in May? I mean, ho- horse racing is still not part of the sports betting scheme no. of everybody. So uh, May probably... Well, you know, you had the you baseball, uh, basketball, you had the pro start basketball. of the playoffs and things like that. Yeah, so NHL hockey. and NBA. Yeah, yep, yeah. all that stuff. You got a lot of... Uh, uh, auto racing, you know, Washington five hundred. Yeah, you know, Washington uh, Wizards was were playing before the Sixers knocked them out in May. Yes. So you know, you'll you'll get some uh, like Virginia people betting on Washington. Wizards. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. So, you know. so, they so got, it, it should be uh, it should be interesting bit. numbers. I mean, I know I know playoff betting is a lot more. There's a lot more of it than there is regular season, especially NBA. Mm-hmm. But we'll see exactly where it goes with that. But um, Virginia may be. Uh, Setting some records pretty soon. We'll see. Rhode Island also released their April numbers. We didn't get a chance to talk about them as well. Um, sports betting handle in April of $29 million. Uh, 16 of it was mobile. Okay. And now, that's that's kind of interesting. I thought it would be a little higher in terms of how much of a percentage of the total handle would be, especially when they got rid of the in-person registration requirement a couple months well, ago. Well, more people are out. You know, more people are going to these places. So, There's no you know. Patriots to bet on either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, it's... It, it, Red Sox are doing well, so maybe Red, that helps. Red, Red Sox just, <laughs> so. just uh, have been doing incredibly well. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's surprising, that team. But um, a couple interesting numbers here. Year uh, Since no, November of 2018, that's its launch, uh, Rhode Island's books have taken in over six hundred twenty-three million dollars in handle. That adds up to about, or averages out to seven hundred twenty-eight dollars for every resident eighteen years or older in oh, the state. Okay, but the problem with that number, you got to realize, a lot of their betting public comes from Massachusetts and Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. So once Connecticut launches, yeah, I, I wonder how much of an effect Connecticut uh, starting sports betting will affect Rhode Island. So uh, that should be interesting. 
Well, you know, I didn't even all, think of that. All depends. I, I rarely the, think of Rhode Island. I'm sorry, people from Rhode Island, but I rarely think of Rhode Island sports betting. Well, you know, we rarely think of New Hampshire. No, no, no. But no. that's all DraftKings. You oh, know, yeah. That's oh, that's yeah. a big that's a big time operation up there in New Hampshire. We don't think about too much. But uh, Rhode Island, Rhode Island's always been interesting to me because they have two two casinos and online sports betting, and they're they're actually doing pretty well. The other numbers uh, for Rhode Island. Uh, Rhode Island is winning more than residents in Washington, D.C., Delaware, Arkansas, and Mississippi. They have tied with Oregon for the the, uh, most winning. So uh, it's going to be kind of interesting to see exactly where Rhode Island goes. You're right with uh, Connecticut launching. Now we have our first main numbers, Oregon. Oregon's May handle came in at $27.8 million. That's up 10% from April. They're they're uh, they're having a slight rebound with the sports betting numbers. Revenue did decrease from April. Uh, most wagered on sports in the state is still basketball, uh, taking in six hundred sixteen million dollars in uh, handle. Rest of the top five: baseball, soccer, hockey, and MMA. Your favorite sport, table tennis. Okay, came in. It was the seventh most bet on sport, but it was the sixth in handle. The handle was about seven hundred seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. Fourteen thousand five hundred eighty-five bets were placed on table tennis, and an average bet of fifty-one dollars. Well, hey, it's a popular sport, I guess, in uh, certainly Colorado. I know that's a that's a big one. What's the other state? Colorado and Oregon. We just Colorado about. and Oregon. Yeah, but but there is no other state that has, I I don't I haven't seen table tennis anywhere else discuss except for Oregon and Colorado. Well, those two states are the only two that I know of that separate out table tennis. Everybody else puts it in the other category. So you have to actually dig around for that, but it's not separated out like it is in those two states. Got a couple deals to hit before we end the segment. We have Fubo TV launching sports betting through their uh, Roku and Android apps. It's a test period. They're beta, beta, beta testing the uh, system. When you're watching Fubo TV, uh, it's going to be the Confederation. Uh, it's a uh, Mexican uh, f- football league, soccer league. Okay. Um, pe- uh, viewers are going to be able to click on a button or a, uh, a uh, link inside the stream where the live stats are going to be starting to stream, and then people watching those will be able to participate in trivia contests to uh, win a free year subscription for Fubo. Uh, it's going to be stuff like who's going to score the first goal. Oh, it's one of those be... predictive things? Yes, yeah, it's, okay. it's a predictive sports betting trivia thing. Uh, let's see. BetMGM did a, became the exclusive sports betting partner of the Hockey News. Uh, let's see. They're going to be creating content with the Hockey News. BetMGM will be. Okay. They're also going to have an increased visibility through print ads in the Hockey News magazine, one of the few publications that's still in print. Which yeah, is, no, I like the hockey news. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been around for a while, and it's one well, of the best ones time. out there. Yeah, a long time, yeah. And staying in the hockey world, we have BetMGM doing a deal with Wayne Gretzky. Oh, I'm going to guess see some commercials with Wayne Gretzky in it, huh? Yep, he's going to be another brand ambassador. He was brought on to help with their North American campaigns. You know, I mean, uh, are we going to start seeing it soon? Because we're going to have the... Uh, the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs here, uh, finals here. Well, I'm I'm assuming you're going to see it there, but I think the the push is going to be more for Canada, okay, than anything, because Canada's getting closer and closer. They're they're actually moved on to the final reading of their bill up there before it becomes almost eligible to become a law. Okay, so Canada's pretty close to happening. I think smart move on their part, and. Uh, Genius Sports and the Earnings Call. This will be the last entry for today. There's a whole bunch of other ones on the print version of this. Uh, in their earnings call. Remember they did the deal with the NFL? Yep. Uh, and uh, part of the deal w- was they were giving warrants to the NFL for ownership in the Genius Sports. Uh, in the earnings call, they disclosed that they the $170 million worth of warrants that were given to the NFL mm-hmm. was only part of the payment. Okay. The the rest of it is uh, there's going to be another twenty two and a half million dollars handed over to the NFL over the next six years. Wow! So okay. you're looking at probably a two hundred million dollar deal there. Jeez! All right. Boy, the money's staggering. 
Yeah, well, it's ownership in the country uh, company now. So yeah. NFL is going to be uh, continuing to grow its share of Genius Sports. Uh, that's it for the uh, book report this week. Uh, if uh, whatever stories we didn't cover, head on over to Turnpike Sports Radio blog. Go to turnpikesportsradio.com, click on the blog button, and you'll see the uh, these stories that we did talk about and also the stories we didn't have a chance to hit in written form there. And that'll do for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike.